After watching for the next three minutes, you'll think twice when it's time to gas up that lawnmower. Consumer investigator Jim Strickland's live in Cobb County with a burn warning involving the plastic gas can sitting perhaps in that garage of yours. Justin, that's right. The gas can industry's own recent testing confirms that under certain conditions, your gas can can explode. Now there is a potential fix and it would cost only pennies. Listen to what one burn victim told me about how inaction cost him. Do you remember the pain? I try not to, but yeah, I do. I was in a coma for four and a half months. Some people say you don't remember a lot. I remember every step I took. It's been nearly eight years. Chad Funches was trimming this pecan tree. He refueled his chainsaw using a common plastic gas can. He also remembers the moment. Like a sucking and then blow. <sighs> Suction in and then an explosion. Right. Funches's lawyer gave us video of a robotic arm pouring gas. A small flame ignites fumes and a vacuum effect then sucks fire back into the can. It's a bomb. It's just waiting to go off under the right circumstances. The person using the can gets covered in gas and he becomes a torch. It's not common, but it is devastating. The Consumer Product Safety Commission counts 11 deaths and more than 1,200 injuries since 1998. Doctors at this Augusta Burn Center had to amputate Funchess's left arm. His right hand is pinned in place. When I look in the mirror, I'm not angry. I'm upset. I blame the, the people who won't do nothing about it. Safety proponents are convinced a wire screen called a flame arrester can keep any ignition source from sucking back into the can. Walker mimicked the effect with a common kitchen strainer. So easy, it's silly. Gas can company Blitz went bankrupt in the face of dozens of lawsuits like the Funches case. In a documentary about the company's final days, the CEO claimed the issue isn't about flame arresters, it's about carelessness. They say we should put devices on our cans to keep them from exploding, and I'm here to tell you it's never going to be safe to pour gasoline on a fire. Funches says that's not what happened with his chainsaw. No open flame. No. Funches was in the gasoline business. Remember that pecan tree? It was behind his convenience store. And for 27 years, he was a volunteer firefighter. He now uses metal fuel cans on his farm with flame arresters. They make cans that are safe. The Consumer Product Safety Commission stated in December, flame arresters should be included in gasoline containers. This document shows an engineer briefed industry leaders and the CPSC. One possible solution is a flame arrester. That was May of 2007. Funches was maimed for life that summer. That's beyond ludicrous. It is tragic. It is wrong. I went shopping for a plastic gas can made by the new owners of the former Blitz factory. It had no flame arrester. You take for granted that what you're using is safe and they're not. Now, Massachusetts researchers have tried 14 different flame arresters, and they say seven passed an initial test. The fuel can manufacturers say once there's a proven design, they will embrace the technology, but that's still months away. And right now, there are 100 million red plastic gas cans out there. Justin. Jim, I have one in my garage right now, so I want to go look at it when I get home. What do we all need to do to protect ourselves uh, tonight, Jim? Well, first of all, of course, never pour gasoline on a fire, open flame, even embers that you think are cool because they may not be. And keep your gas can relatively full so there's less room for fumes. And finally, if you don't have time to wait and you have to refuel your small engine without letting it cool down, I rigged up this, a strainer inside a funnel. It will let you pour the gas but also shield any heat from the hot air that's coming off that engine. So those are three things you can do to keep your family safe. So Jim, real quick. Live, yeah, Jim, Ackworth, Cobb yeah, County, Jim Strickland. Yeah, Jim, okay, real go ahead. Jim, real quick here. So you're saying that the hot engine is largely the problem here, that that engine hot is what's creating the problem. I'm saying that the engine hot could potentially be the problem. That's what Chad Funches said happened to him with his chainsaw. Right. Now, in much of the testing that's being done, they're using live flames. But in the Funches case, he says it was just heat 
coming off that engine. Maybe it was a spark, but he says there was no flame while he was pouring that fuel. Understood. Great reporting on that, Jim.